welcome back to Bjoglington on Sea. Yes, hello and welcome back to Bjoglington on Sea. It's another grey, miserable May day outside. The summer seems to have got lost on its voyage, but hopefully it'll get here soon. Uh, but that means more time for staying inside and playing with trains. So I'm having a bit of a spring gala. I asked on my community tab, I said, oh, you know, what should I run today? And uh, Kelly said, well, why not do a spring gala and have a bit of a big four theme? Because obviously it's uh, the, what was it, 100th anniversary of the big four or something um, come together. So I'm attempting to do that, but I've had a few issues. So I was going to run Hollyhead, which is my own, only LMS liveried locomotive. And uh, it's not working. It's got issues with the wheels. There's a crank pin issue on something. Basically, it's fallen apart. Uh, so instead of that, I've got a Black 5, Airshare Yemenry is going to be pulling the LMS rake. And I haven't got a small southern locomotive that really works at the moment, so I'm going to be using Stepney. And um, yeah, there'll be a few sort of things like that throughout the episode probably. But I've tried to go for a big four theme, and there'll be passengers and freight in this um, gala, I suppose. So. We're going to get on with that, with the first trains being Ershi Yemenry on the LMS Period 3s on the outside line, which has the operating mail coach at the rear. And then on the middle line, we're starting off with the other famous um, thing this year, which is the Blind Scotsman's in Jimmy. So that is. Uh, running there, and I think it's on the rails properly. And then we have Stepney on some Graham Farish developments that I have. Obviously he's a LVSCR locomotive that was then a southern locomotive and preserved. And so, we'll get some footage of those running.
and I was supposed to go and stop losing the station, so I'm going to start the flying Scots and then talk to the elite and just get ASU in here. There we go. And we'll just stop stepping in the station. So, there. Right. While I change over the wrong stop for the next things to run in the guard, uh, I'll hand over to Alex at the desk, who is going to go a little bit further into the future from the grouping and uh, have a bash with another project. Yes, thank you, Alex, and welcome to the desk and something a bit more modern. Um, so, some of you may remember my Class 20 um, had an unfortunate um, incident whereby the chassis completely split in two. And I had managed to get the body sort of on and get it running, which is slightly hilarious in, you know, my opinion. So, what I'm going to do today is, what I'll do is I'll zoom out a bit. So you can actually see what I'm going to do today. Now, Spopus is in the hallway. You may hear him giving out, but that's for a very good reason. And that's because um, I'm going to attempt to repair this in a way that um, I don't really want the cat to be involved with. So if I can get the body off, it's going to be a bit difficult. So it's actually just being held on by the expanded chassis. Um, just coming off this end. I don't want to crack the bodywork too much. Um, oops, I've torn a hole in that. It's not good because I plan on using that to find another page on the inside. Come on. Ah, there we go. That's one half out. <laughs> Hopefully we don't break it anymore. So as you can see, it's actually completely split in two. And this is the insides of it, you've got the flywheel here with this drive shaft, um, which controls the motor. It looks like there should be something here. Uh, I think it's meant to be this weight thing up here that's wedged in there. I think that's supposed to be there. So I have to see if I can glue that back on. And then there's like a big bit of weight in there. I don't know if that's original. That was in it when I got it. So. There's an awful lot of like expanded um, Mazak or whatever it is in the thing. You can see the cracks there, and that's caused the edges of the um, the class twenty to expand. So just put us back into focus, and that means that I can't get the chassis back into the body easily. And you're supposed to attach it by putting the buffers through these holes, and they go in. Well, they would go in normally you push them in and they go into holes on the chassis but they don't so what i've got is a file and it's either going to go well or it's not going to go well uh, but basically i'm going to attempt to file down the front of this a bit because that's expanded and then file down that end a little maybe and um then i'm going to attempt to glue the chassis back together with some super glue. I don't know about the sideways expansion of the chassis, but it doesn't look to be too bad. There aren't any long ways cracks. It's just that way, I think. Um, so we'll give it a go. I don't know how much of this you'll be able to see. I suppose I could move the camera over here because obviously, you know, <laughs> or maybe put it like, like in the middle and we'll see. Hopefully it's piled away enough on the other end that it will just go together. So yeah, it doesn't look like it's picked up any of the dust really. So I've cleared up now and I've got the assembly here ready. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the story is with these because obviously they're the two individual lines but they're like constantly crossed over or twisted um that's very strange it's like someone took them off and then attached them like upside down or something i don't know what's going on there i don't know how to fix that either if you swap it round because it does it does run in the right direction but i don't know if it's to insulate the 
the wires from each other somehow. Anyways, enough of that waffle. Um, so I've got to reattach this, and I'm kind of hoping that it's just gonna glue together normally with some of this, which I got in the works, which is super glue, multi-purpose liquid from Bostic. So got that. And I don't know because there's not much clearance. See on the on the underside. I mean, it doesn't need to attach to anything on the underside. Like it's just that the bogey is gonna, you know, be touching off of it. Whether I can lay down something across that that gap, um, a piece of plastic perhaps, just to uh, weld it together better. Like, because I mean, look, if I hold it like that. Well, rather, I'm not holding it like that. It's it's there. So what I do is I glue it and then add a little bit onto that. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tip that up that way, I suppose, and run the glue along this piece and not the other side because I won't be able to see what I'm doing. Like, and hope that I don't mess this up and get it in the wrong place. So obviously, you've got to do this by popping the lid on. And that punctures the thing, the seal or whatever. And now the important thing to remember with super glue is not to get it on yourself because that never goes well. I should have had some tissue or something really to wipe up any spillage, but no, oh well. I can always run off and get some. So we want to really gently apply this and hope that it doesn't run too much but also it doesn't melt the metal or whatever so we're just a little bit there a little bit there and a bit there and there and there and there there we go and now hopefully we can pick this up and get it together without making any mistakes Now, let's see, preparation, clean, always point the tube away from you, pointing up me now though, application, avoiding skin contact, uh, what does it say how to use it? Sorry, I'm just reading the back of the packet. Screw down the cap, press the surfaces together and hold for a few seconds while the glue sets. Well... We can always add more glue in a minute. Now, see what we can use. So I've got this um, Icon Paint Brushes Packet. I can't remember if that's uh, a works brand or if it's like Mr. Price or something. So I'm going to cut a bit of this because it's kind of thin. And... Get that ready so i'm thinking of like sliding that in under there straight across from side to side um so let's trim it down a bit i see there and there i suppose that's what now trick is to get it in without getting any glue on myself. And then hold, please. And there. That looks like it will be alright. Making sure it's Sorry, I'm getting my hands in the way. <laughs> oh, I'm never looking at the camera when I do this. All right, so I'm just going to add a bit more glue to where the crack is, which is just here. And on sorry, the top side of where I've added that extra bit of plastic, just dab a bit there. There we go. Right, the weight is here. I think it goes on like that. So we'll just 
a bit of glue on these pads. And I don't know if this glue is supposed to hold metals or mixed materials, but there. We'll put that like that. And hopefully the drive shaft doesn't ever come disengaged again, because I probably won't be able to get um, get that, you know, back into place. All right, so we'll leave that dry, and then I'll cut to trying to put the body on. Yes, right, well, we'll find out if Alex at the desk has any luck fixing that class 20 later on. But for now, I'm going to run the next few trains. So I have got a freight train called by the eponymous J15, or the uh, descendant or rebuild of the Y14, the GER locomotive you can see uh, in real life at the uh, North Norfolk Railway. So that is on a mixed rate. I've tried to get something from each region, so I've got a Denby wagon, that's like a northeastern, northeastern coat wagon, northeastern van, southern open wagon, Knapsbury Mental Hospital, I think that was an LMS in area one, uh, an LMS complex container on a Backman BR um, complex thing, because I didn't have, I, what I have, I can't find the uh, complex wagon. Uh, and then a Great Western wagon, another northeastern coat wagon, a southern railway cattle van, uh, SJ Bull in the Sun's main line wagon and a mid Suffolk Light Railway uh, van and Northeastern Brick. So that's my mixed uh, <laughs> good strain. Um, and then on the outside line, I have Dinner Dan on uh, the bright Malachi coaches with the fancy restaurant coach in the middle. And then on the inside line, sorry, not inside, well, it is inside, it's inside the two of them, it's the middle line. Um, I have. Lord of the Isles, along with the smoke generator that I got from England a year ago. I don't know if the smoke generator is going to work because I don't have any oils, there's residue from the various oils I've put in it, it probably will work. Uh, but I have left it wired up just in case. And as you can see, I've got a, well, you might not be able to see, I don't know if it's in shop, and it has a brake coach now. So I essentially have the Victorian train set, the one that Hornby had done the Trying Railways Remembered version of. Um, but it's the original trying one. So, you know, it's obviously the paintwork isn't as good considering it says Great Eston, or so it says Grat Eston on this side because the transfers are really off. Uh, but it has this lovely shiny dome, and of course, uh, it has smoke. And the whole thing cost me a fraction of the cost of the new one. So it might not be the smoothest runner. It might, well, actually, it's quite smooth, but it might not be as smooth as the new one. Uh, it might not necessarily look as fantastic, but, you know, it's, it's vintage. It, to me, you know, well, I don't care, I think it's great. <laughs> uh, but to stop waffling on about that now, uh, the other thing about it is it's very noisy. But it's going to get very noisy because when I do this, we also have DCC sound in the J15. So that is going to set off now. Here now. Number 7510, the Olimar. And we've got Dinner Man going. And then we're going to the Isles going. And I'll get some children. Don't worry, I'll slow them down for a while. Okay. I'll watch how fast the Isles
You were sleepy boy, smush boos. Hmm. It's uh, the triangle and some uh, clip it's got there, like, it's very fast, and I don't like running it that fast on the outside line, because I'm worried, I stopped that, I missed the signal, oh dear, <laughs> uh, because I'm worried that it'll just go off the railway, because sometimes, if you run it for too long at full speed, the front bogey decides to hop the tracks, and uh, then the whole thing derails, which happened uh, when I was testing it earlier on, before I filmed, sadly I didn't manage to catch it on camera. But those are stopped, and we're going to go take a look now at the Task 20. Yes, we're back at the desk, and I think the glue has dried. Seems to be, I mean, I'm giving it a, a, a bit of a, a wiggle, and it seems to have dried pretty well. So, I mean, look, I can hold it up by the weight. That's a good sign. The question is whether the body and the... Uh, chassis will go together properly. So we are going to go and put it that way, I think. Or we'll just drop it straight down. Wait, hang on. I've got to make sure these wires aren't touching them. And that they aren't touching the chassis. Right, they're crossed over. They're not touching each other, I think. Um, and there's these holes that have to line up. So we're going to go and just plonk it on top. Okay, maybe not quite so simple as plonking on top. How the dickens did I get this on and off? I, I honestly don't know. We'll try it that way. Put the front in there, and then... Is it still too expanded? I mean, I had a lot of trouble getting the body off, but this is, you know, what would we do without the extra weight, perhaps? Someone's obviously attached to that. We just, okay. So, good news. The body went on perfectly. Can I get the body off again? Let's see now. There we go. Off. It's engaged and... Okay, well anyways, it's... It's good. It's snug. It, it won't come off again. But it's one piece. And the buffers is... The main thing is whether the buffers will go into the chassis block. Because before, I could not get them to go in. And they were just stood out a mile. <laughs> Come on. Nope. Not that hole, anyways. Maybe a different buffer. Although that one does have a bench shank already, so we'll see. 
gently enough. Maybe it just keeps bending. <sighs> Damn, that is something that I really wanted to go well. I'll try a different one. And we'll see. Yeah, now they're going in through the plastic, which they weren't doing very well before, but they're still stuck out a mile. But at least it's got buffers. It's got, it's going to have, it's, uh, I mean, the, the alignment looks fine. I just, oh, I don't know. Ooh, that one has gone in further than all the rest. By about two millimetres. In this one. Oh, that one actually went in. Oh. Nope, that one's not going to go in. And these ones, I don't think these ones are going to go in. Let me put this weight in front of them and push them together. Nope. <laughs> For some reason, they remind me of a comic. Um, I don't know if it was, it was, it was something like the 1800s, I think. And there's a picture of, oh, is it meant to be a locomotive that's taking the mechanic out of George Hudson? But anyway, he's got a crown and he's got the, his front buffers like hands and they're all like limp. And that's what these front buffers remind me of. Um, they were in a book I had as a child, but I honestly, I, I can't remember the details. But I'll, I'll quickly pop this on the layout and see if it still runs and it hasn't been glued shut. And then we'll get on with the last thing. Well, we'll just see whether the class 20 is going to work or not now. Um, it is on the line. The power to the outside line is there. It's a dud, I think. It sounds like it's shorting. I give up. <sighs> right, yes, let's welcome back to the desk the class 20 chassis again. Here's the drive shaft and here are the wires. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to remove the wires completely. So I'm just going to go hop. Right, stick that back under there, there, and then, see now, we wire this up, and that means tinning these wires, so. comes back over here again. Okay, right. Let's try this with the power without the drive shaft and see if it turns on. I would say that's a yes. Let's see now if we can get this drive shaft back in. I think we can put it in that side and then let's see now there's the thing there. You just have to bend it a bit, do you? There, there we go. Right. Now, hopefully, this will work and we won't have any more issues. No more shorts and no more, you know, on and off. Having the body on and off all the time. Right, ready? Oh. Ooh, it's moving. Go backwards. Yeah. Sorry, you can't see it's throwing off the drive shaft in the tunnel. Right, so one more time, I'm going to try and put this. 
down to here. And I can't understand why it's made in such a way that this drive shaft just flies out every five seconds. Come on, in you go. Like, why is that a thing? Why is there that much movement allowed? Is that supposed to be further forward? I don't know. Let's see. Let's get the power on it there and just... That's better performance than I've had so far, so... Let's just... Bunch the wires up there into the cab space. Wash the body back under the ready thing somehow. Thanks, Alex, but calm down, it's only a train. Um, yes, yeah, so he's giving me the, the class 20, and as you can see, the sun is out now. It's a new day because Alex at the desk has been working quite strenuously to get this break working um so i'm gonna put it over there i'm gonna move the camera and we're gonna see if this lima class 20 still has life because yeah okay i need a little bit of help coupling Yes, I should derail those coaches with this one thing about. Forwards. Right, let's see. Come on. Okay, so let all of this wasted effort be in vain. It's on full power now. Stops and the passengers can have a look at Squish Bus. Who's busy attacking the ship? Oh, who's that in the garden? It's uh, Scraggles. And the Class 20 has left half its train behind. Come on, just work with you. Good I just get the coaches off. Because I don't think it's going forward. <sighs> well, so I've had just about enough of this. I'm going to sit up for the next bit. There's a smush push. Smushy! You enjoying the sun? You nice and comfortable over there on the windowsill. Mind your tail though. There'll be trains running again now. Right, well, enough of that. Time to... <clears throat> Yeah, it's lovely in the sun there, isn't it, Smush Bus? Anyways, uh, it's time to run the next trains of the gala. 
So I have got on the outside line my Batman 56XX, uh, 5667, I think, is it 667? Yeah, um, and that is on a mixed Great Western train. When I say mixed, there's only one coach in it, which is a Hornby generic four-wheeler with passengers. And there is a Great Western open and fan by Mainline, then a Lima horse box, then a Hornby Conflat, then a Hornby Railroad Siphon Hitch, and then three Lima milk tankers and a Mainline brake band. So that's running there, and it seems to jump a bit over the points at the front, but um, hopefully it'll be alright. Something, something's catching. Yeah, the front wheel's off. Try it again. And just see if we're going to get some mind details for the first one. Right, no problems there, sir. So on the middle line, I've got my SRM7 from Hornby, which is number 357, and that is pulling a Graham Parish banana van, two Easter Iron Mines wagons, there's a old Hornby SR wagon, a rubber triangle, uh, a Hornby Thomas Prince Oil Tanker, a Hornby cattle van, a mainline Shepherd Dean van, and the Graham Parish brake van that I got while I was in Cherry. Although the M7 also appears to be off the rails for some strange reason. So there we go. As I was saying. And on the inside line, I have got another retro thing. It's the Triang 3F repainted into a sort of LMS livery with some living characters. So it's sort of early local workers to or whatever, but yeah. So we'll get some footage of those running now. And uh, if they all work. Unfortunately, the 3F keeps getting stuck on these points, but you see, the problem is, is the M7 also doesn't like go around first radius, and the same with the 56XX, so I've had to keep that on the inside line because it's an earlier kind of model. Um, so I think the solution will have to be to sub out that for a different locomotive. Um, 
But I don't really have anything left. I mean, I've got stuff sorted for the ending, but I'll just have to pick something. Um, right, I think we'll go for the packet because it's just there. So, look, leave those trucks there in the siding and we'll take off the 3F to make sure the power is turned down. And then we'll have the packet come to the rescue. Or it would if it were coupled up. There we go. Well, the sunshine really came out for day two of the car, isn't it? Ooh, lovely. Lots of happy passengers, I hope. And here comes the rescue ticket now. Well, I'm going to stop those there now, uh, so I get the last set of uh, trains set up. Um, I think the sun actually got a little bit too uh, hot this week, just because he's, uh, he's popped off. So, um, we will stop the XX there, and we will stop the N7 there, and the rescue packet's bringing in its train now. So we'll just ease that into the station. And now, giving him a break from fighting with locomotives that don't work, uh, Alex at the desk is going to open some uh, little extra that came with my new tripod. Yes, hello and welcome back to the desk, and hopefully this will be a bit more relaxed than dealing with the Class 20. So what I have here is my old light ring that came with my original tripod that's now broken, and this just works by a wire going to a USB uh, plug in the socket. So it's got this control, you can turn it on, you can turn the brightness down, you can turn the brightness up, and you can also change to different modes of that or whatever. I think there's like three different modes. So anyways, um, that's all that does. And I can't really use it because, you know, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do with it. Um, I know it's probably for filming like close-ups of your face and stuff. But I don't really like doing that much close-up work with my face for obvious reasons. Um, so what I have instead is this, which came with my new tripod, which is a... LJJ30 RGB LED ring fill light. Light up your beauty. And then, um, I'm not entirely sure if this is bad translation or just really badly written, because obviously some of these words aren't actually words, but 
the bullet points are fill light and beauty f ace make face and eye in beauty oh yeah nightcore extreme and obviously the multiple color temper actual made in china and then it's got a little thing there showing you all the different colors that you can use and actually uh, my daughters are just waiting for me to open this so they can look at the, the different colors it says advocates practical sassic I don't know what that is. is that like basic, but a bit more sassy. Simple, natural product design ideas. Humanity design. No grandiose appearance. <laughs> um, yeah, shouldn't it be? Yeah, no grandiose appearance. Only designs that fit the user. Expelinice. Expelinice. Ah, yes. I've always had a good Expelinice when I'm not having a grandiose appearance. So... Um, it does have a thing at the top then, which says black, pink, blue, and a thing that has a picture of a remote, and neither of those are ticked. And I've had this for a little while, but I've not actually, um, opened it yet. Uh, so let's light up our beauty and, um, see what's inside. <laughs> oh, I can't write. Okay, so... Oh, loads of stuff. Oh, it drops out. So it's like a little, a little remote. And okay, there's a, a, another camera mount. There's a remote. Oh, there's a new uh, mount there as well for the tripod. There's the instructions for the tripod. I'm wondering where they were. And then there's another mount there. That must be for the ball thing that goes in the middle of this. This must be the. Uh, Selfie ring light. Oh, wow. I didn't, didn't know that that was in there. Okay, there's more interesting things here than I thought. So, is there anything else in the box? There should be a little stick with a ball. Under here. There we go. Right. So, as you can see, we've got the ring lights. And you've got this ball thing that screws onto here. I think my girls probably wouldn't take that off because they'll be using it without that. And then this goes onto here, presumably. So undo that. Put that on. Screw that on there. And then you have your selfie thing. And I actually have this little tripod that came with it. It was sort of like a big set of things. And I just went, oh, well, I'll buy that because I need the tripod. So we can actually attach that to there for now. We have our, our light ring. And I'll just move back a bit so we can actually see it uh -huh. um right so i just fixed this tripod <laughs> what do we got here uh the instructions or rather this is rotating axis adjust the inclination of the smartphone holder led lickering uh that's what that says there um smartphone holder remote control of the lighting Unlocking the rotary axis, yeah, that's all stuff to do with the tripod. And then on the little remote, there's a thing that says blue light. Uh, button to take picture in iOS, but I don't have that. On, off button, button to take picture in Android. Okay, so it's actually got, it's got two buttons, and it's got a setting for Android and a setting for iOS, um, which is interesting. This device is not a toy, it says at the top. Yeah. This device is not a toy. Do not modify the device and its components. Disposable battery should not be recharged. The LED bulbs in this device are not replaceable. When they reach the end of their life, the entire light ring must be replaced. And then it says, place your smartphone in this space. Uh, sorry, it's a bit blurry there. <laughs> Adjust. Doo -doo. And then it says, intensity. RGB mode, 26 colors available. Change the temperature of the light. Decrease intensity. Uh, on off button right we'll try and figure this out and it just says about so bluetooth control for smartphone insert a cr2032 battery not included into the back of the remote control by removing the cover turn it on move the on off button upwards blue light will flash activate your smartphone bluetooth displays ab shutter three pay or device with the remote control once connected the blue light will stop flashing open the camera on your smartphone you can take pictures remotely by pressing the button on the remote control this appliance must not be used by children of at least eight. Yeah, so maybe used by children of eight years of age. My persons were produced. Okay, uh, children must not play with this appliance. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, anyways. So we have got the <laughs> Rebosh. <laughs> that's the that's the light ring that goes on the phone. And I have no idea how that works. So um I won't really be able to show that at the moment because obviously I'm filming using my phone. But we'll have a go with the RF wireless remote hit and see. So this one has a pull tab and it says that it doesn't have batteries in it. So I don't know what the story is with that. It says push and open. Oh, I get it. It's like a catch. There we go. Okay, so it does have a, a battery in that one, just not in that one. Okay, so we can plug that into our USB. And the lights have come on, and it's a bit chunkier than the controls on the other light ring. It's also the wires are a bit more tangled up. There you go. So you've got on for RGB and you've got lightning. So this is the light ring that's on. And you've got this is up. Oh, nope. Okay, I can turn it down. I can turn it up. And now I'll try the RGB. You've got orange, red, purple. Uh, different shade of purple. It's coming up slightly different on my camera. It's very strange. Okay, blue, light blue, lighter blue, turquoise, white. Ooh, well that's kind of cool. I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to use it for when it's doing that, other than an interesting mood light. Uh, what else is there? Sort of um, disco-y light, I like a loading thing. That's nice. I like those colours. Look at that. Again, I like. What exactly am I supposed to use these settings for? Does anyone know? Am I going to be making my face go rainbow while filming something? Okay, that one's designed to give someone an epileptic fit. Green, red, blue, that's just changing between them. That one's sort of a smoother transition. That's another loading style one that changes colours. There's supposed to be 26 functions. So I think we've gone around all of those. Just as bright as they go, they do go darker. And then you've got the remote. So, uh, yeah, um, I'm not too sure this remote's gonna work, to be honest. Maybe to click unlock. There's a settings, there's a settings button, but I've no screen. Look, there's a settings button. This wasn't explained in the in the manual. I don't know what M and S are either. M S Auto Nope. Right, that's essentially defunct. Uh for now. If anyone knows how that's supposed to work, let me know. Uh and then I've also got this, which I can plug in. We'll just look at this one last thing and then we'll get back to the trains. You can always skip this section if you're not that interested in this stuff, but I don't know. Okay, so this is obviously supposed to plug into your phone. And unless that's that controller is for this, that might explain it. And it was just falling out. Okay, so that has a little button on the back that you push on, off. And then we turn it on. Does this affect it at all? Nope. 
Still no idea. Anyways, um, I have to find a battery for this before I can test it. So I'll let you know how that goes in a future video. But yeah, it's like a little kind of torch thing. You unplug it, it stays on. So it must have some sort of internal in charge battery thing. But yeah, this is just the stuff that I got essentially free with my tripod. And yeah, thought I'd just show you it. So now I'm going to get back to running the trains for the last time this gala. I hand back to Alex over there. So goodbye from the desk. Yes, well, hopefully my daughters will enjoy playing with their new rainbow light. Uh, I can't see myself having much use for that, but now it's time to run the last trains of the gala, and I have uh, something that's not uh, big four, but I'll get to that. So on the inside line, I have a Hornby, or might be Prime Hornby, I think it's Hornby though, uh, LNER J3, running three Hornby teats, uh, well, that's the teats, they're the old generic four wheelers, um, or should I say freelance four wheelers. Uh, so that's going to be running there. And then on the outside line for a change, and something that I don't normally do, and the double header, which is the Lima King George V and the Hornby Railroad Auto Pool in GWR range. Yeah, when they start. There you go, there's a nice double header to round off the gala with. Uh, pulling a rake of Hornby Railroad GWR pool. So I'll just pause that a sec, and I'll just stop for that a sec, because on the middle line I have my Triang uh, Pullmans pulled by D5579, which is my weathered open rate Triang first 30 bar, which I don't get to run that often, because it's a cigar and the sun's come out today, I figured I'd run it. There's a bit of a change to the other day when it was grey and miserable. So, so that running. And we have got the J83 So, let's get some footage of those things. Hang on a minute, that's not right.
Alright, well, that's fine to end that now, I suppose. So, we'll stop the J83 in the station. And we'll stop the uh, double header in the station as well. It was nice to run one of those for a change, even if there was a slight kick up at the start. And uh, speaking of pick ups, the Cast 31 decided to stop working halfway through. But that's fine because the Centurion Terrier Merton decided to step in and help. So, uh, yes. Uh, that's all from this Spring Gala. I know it's probably a bit of a longish episode because of the fights for the Class 20, but uh, that's all for now, I suppose. Um, I have ideas about what I'm going to do now. You know, I've got other projects that I'm planning on doing. I just have to find the time. It's had taken a bit longer than I thought it would to do this video, but never mind. So, thank you all for watching. Thanks to the new subscribers, and uh, I see there was one or two between uh, the start of filming this and the end, so Thank you to those people that have joined in uh, with subscribing to the channel. Thanks to everyone who likes and comments. And uh, don't forget, you can also share to your friends um, if you want to. So for now, I'm going to say goodbye. And uh, me and Antimopus are off to, uh, well, he's going to stay in some days. I'm going to go for a walk because uh, it's lovely and sunny now, unlike the other day. So until next time, I've been Alex. He's been Alex at the desk. And you've been a wonderful audience. So uh, goodbye. Oh, and don't forget. There's also the, uh, what's it, the subscribe thing and the playlist thing. But until then, I'm off. So, hurrah!